it's just gotta be a blazing joke. I curse whoever it is that didn't listen underneath my breath. A tracer now, a tracer that isn't the white-haired boy. Right after the literal demon enters my store. I'm done for. Hey, mm. charmed. I clench my fist and try to remain stoic. Hi, likewise. Maybe it's fine, Twyla. Maybe my store won't be closed down after they realize I'm the source of the outburst. Maybe this guy doesn't even know a payos demon has been roaming around because of me. <laughs> okay, Lao Senior, I'll take whatever you've got. Hit me. Are you, uh, are you all right here? Yes. Amazing, very convincing. Twyla, clearly emotionally stable landing here, everyone. Yes, sorry. Just, uh, lost in thought there. <laughs> You're doing great, Twyla. That made it so much better. Um. Excuse me, but is... is something the matter? No. You're good, kid. I'm here as a customer, actually. So you can rest easy, right? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about the uniform. Just had to settle some last-minute business this morning. Sheesh, flaring countries drowning in payoffs, it feels like. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't know anything about that. I brought myself into this, really. I could have just been some kid that made cute jewelry in her late mother's store and wasn't very good at it, but persevered. Then actually, she got good enough to actually attract customers and start making enough to make a meager living. Then one day, she visits the local bakery. Fast forward 10 years, alternate Twyla and the baker's son are happily married with two kids in a cozy little house with a nice garden. Say, so, you're sure you're good? He makes bread, me jewelry. We teach our kids our trades and pass on our humble legacies together. We die peacefully of old age. The end. No outbursts, no enchanting, no flaring payoffs demons. Hey, it's Twyla, right? You all right, kid? No white-haired boys, no stoicism, no existential confusion! Twyla! Huh? Sorry, I... Mm. I don't know, where were we? You sure you're good? Forces. I was trusting Cheng with your case, but... Huh? Cheng? My case? What case? Case? I don't have a case. Me? No, no, no. No, you've got the wrong Twyla. No, sir. We only have a case of stairs in this establishment. Ah, that's right. I know about your little arrangement with Chen. <sighs> Thought you'd call him Lao, of course. Though you'd call him Lao, of course. I'm his supervising manager. Name's owner. Whoa. So you really are Lao Senior. Huh? Nothing. Charm to meet you too, owner. So, Lao's told you everything then? That's right. Look, I know he's taken a, let's call it an experimental approach to your case. I don't know if I'd entirely approve, but you can rest assured that I'm keeping an eye on things. To be on up front with you, he's a good kid. Honest work ethic. We don't have many of his prowess at all in, in the forces, let alone at such a young age. Hmm. Hmm. I thought that must be the case. He's always complaining about the other traces, so I figured as much. Huh. That's Cheng for ya. You're in good hands, don't sweat it. Hmm. That being said, take care of yourself, yeah? I... yeah. I will, Anna. Don't know why you, you were spacing out earlier, but... I'm going to turn a blind eye for it for now. Not my business. Or is it? No. No, sir. <laughs> Flair and earth. You don't got to call me sir, kid, but good to know. Don't tell me. What kind of jewellery do you reckon a young man around your age would be after? Hmm? I can't say for sure. People's tastes vary a lot. Though I have noticed a lot of the younger customers have been going for bracelets recently. Perfect. Bracelet will work f just fine. I'm sure my son will appreciate the drop. Hmm? The drop? 
Shoot. I thought I heard you kids saying something about that the other day. You mean the drip? <laughs> oh, you mean drip. The drip. Huh. That's the one. Give me the drip. <laughs> I'm cringing. I'm cringing. I laugh and realize Ona's managed to lift my mood. Maybe this will be a pleasant reprieve after all. <laughs> one drippy bracelet coming right up then. <laughs> Let's do... Let's do gold. Gold bracelet. Simple. Let's see what it turns into. <laughs> A tracer now. Oh, forces. Just consume me, please. Not the first time my concern about a tracer turned to, out to be misplaced. Chill, he's just any other customer. I've had worse, and I've survived more. Somehow I got through that though, didn't I? The demon of the skies. I'm shaken, but at my core I feel weirdly stable. I'm stronger than I thought, and honestly I keep proving it, don't I? Komi. So, uh, what was that about uh, cherishing Lao? I meant those words, didn't I? I almost didn't need to think for them to come to me. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Even now, there's meaning in what we have. I just know. At least there's a glimmer of a silver lining. It was great to meet you yesterday. She seemed so patient and composed and confident and fuss as she was pretty. True. <laughs> She's so capable going out of her way to get up before dawn to help me. Fosses. Thanks to you, I almost forgot about the twins. Almost. Just like the demon, I can use my experience with them to grow, no? Somehow? I can move past those worries now, right? Like I said, I did all I could. Ooh, beautiful. Oh wait, is this a, this looks like a segmented one too, right? Like four? Oh, this could be long. <laughs> Might be a multi-recording sesh. Hey again, Ona. Here's your son's bracelet. <laughs> hey, that's the drip, sis. Hey, that's the drip, sis. That's the drip drop. Please, stop. So, you were after an enchantment too? Mm. Yeah. Tell me about that. Cheng told me the circle approved your practice and everything. Uh, am I being audited or something? Yeah, it's all been approved. I'm just transferring a small amount of my customers' payoffs to their jewelry. The idea is that it helps make their gifts a little bit more special. For example, not only will you be giving that bracelet to your son, but they'll also feel a hint of an emotion of your choice from it too. Mm. And that it's coming straight from your spirit, so hopefully it'll help connect the two of you as well. Mm. You're doing a good job of selling it, that's for sure. But... Truth is, kid, I'm not exactly optimistic about this practice of yours. Initially, it was quite the opposite even. But well, look, that's just what my gut's telling me. It's instinct, chalked up from decades of experience. I could still be wrong. And that's the kid's job anyway. Exceeding the expectations of the geriatrics. So let's see if you can surprise me, eh? Cheng certainly believes you could. Cheng has a knack for getting me into these situations, doesn't he? Flaring white hair boy. I'll shave all that silky hair off in his sleep if he keeps this out. Mm -hmm. Sure. No pressure, huh? Ha! <laughs> That's right. Tell me about your son, then. Do you have any idea of what kind of enchantment you'd like for him? Yeah, right. That kid's a real piece of work. Mm. Guess it could only be my fault, though, eh? His name's Vulcan, by the way. Oh, that's a nice name. Thanks. Chosen by none other than yours truly. 
It's a big name to live up to, you know? Vulcan? But I gotta say, he was doing just that when he was a little one. Now, we all had high hopes for him. Right now, though, Vulcan's not really in the best shape. I get the feeling he's stuck in life, you know? Ah. You said he's around my age, huh? I think a lot of us are, honestly. Yeah, you're right, kid. I was too, I'm sure. But the thing is, he stopped trying. I was thinking the other night, and it hit me. Remembered a time when I was at a standstill in my life. What kept me going? Of all things was the feeling of being disappointed in myself. Hmm. Disappointed, you say? Hmm. That's right. I know it sounds a little strange, eh? Usually that's the kind of feeling that keeps you down in the dumps. But it pushed me to get off my butt and turn my life around. So you're thinking that's what Vulcan needs right now, too? That's right. Interesting. I quell the doubt that has begun rising to the surface already. Let's hear him out. Could you tell me a bit more about Vulcan, Ona? Sure. What do you want to know? Anything and everything helps, but at the moment I'm mostly wondering. What do you mean when you said he's stuck? Right. Well, first of all, like I said, he's a bright kid. Straight aces growing up. Eager to learn. And he's alright. He's always had a good spirit, that one. Which, I gotta say, means a whole lot more to me than any grades or smarts could. Ah, My wife was overjoyed when we had our little one. He turned our lives around. Proud times those were. Almost every day, there was some story she'd tell me about him excelling in school. Ah, What did the teacher say about him? Oh, all sorts of things. Occasionally we'd get one like him, right? Always top of the class, doesn't have to study much. You know the type. Yeah, like a prodigy. Sorta, of, yeah. But again, that thirst for knowledge was what the teachers were always impressed by. Kid would read his way through whatever questions he had. Gotta thank Safi for that one, though. Safi is your wife. Sure is, luckily. She'd always leave Vulcan's questions unanswered and go dig up a book for him to go find the answer for himself instead. Smart. <laughs> you bet. Sav was a teacher most of her life, so she got all sorts of tricks up her sleeve like that. Ah, but you know how it is. They gotta go and get older. And then it's a whole nother story. Hmm? Vulcan's not inquisitive like before. Hard to say, Twyla. He's inquisitive, no doubt. It's ingrained into him. But... Hmm. Back then... It was nothing but joy for all of us. Vulcan, most of all. Nowadays, he's as smart as ever, constantly absorbing knowledge. But not doing anything with it. But that joy, I just don't see it anymore. Oh, I'm sorry, Ona. That's all right, Twyla. I'm sure you know better than me what it's like these days. There's more information out there than ever before. More accessible than anyone needs it to be. Of course. And well, it's too much for the kid, I reckon. The more you know about what takes place on this flare and planet, the more you know about injustice. The more you realise there's no shortage of it in any nation. Horses knows Noah is a prime example too, which doesn't help things. So that's how he's stuck? Mm-hmm. That's the why, at least. Kid had big dreams before he lost sight of them all. It's not just making him upset all this knowledge. He's grown pessimistic, cynical. Always browsing online forums, articles, watching news, absorbing all the blazing bull these people spew up. All those dreams. He thinks they're all stupid and meaningless now. No. What do you think of those old dreams of his? 
Mm. Um, they were uh, my dreams too. He sold me on them, each one. Vulcan kept dreaming up new futures. They'd change slightly, then drastically. Then eventually, they just stopped. <sighs> Stars. I feel bad for the guy, but I need more from him before we can switch tracks. Tracer or not, I still have to ensure disappointment is really what we want for Vulcan here. Ona, could you tell me more about... Those dreams? These dreams he had, the futures he gave up on. Can you tell me more about them? Hmm. I suppose I could, if it helps. Yes. Sorry, I'm just trying to understand how Vulcan changed over the years better. Right, well, like I said, the kid had a lot of dreams. Big, lofty dreams. One of them was... Must have been when he was around 15. He told me he wanted to be an environmental scientist. Help alleviate the damage we're doing to the forces. Sort of like I am, but in a different way. A couple years later, he felt that wasn't enough. If he was a scientist being told what to do, he wouldn't be able to do as much good for the planet as if he ran the operations himself. So basically the knowledge of the difference he can make. He's like, there's, t there's, probably feels overwhelmed by everything. All the negative environmental aspects, negative that the general population is causing and it just feels useless. Like it's probably like, oh, there's no point in trying because nothing's gonna really change. Depression. This kind of thinking led him to want to run a business, you know, making substantial products and pushing a more eco friendly industry practices. Later on, he felt just one business couldn't do much against the unethical practices of all the others. So he started thinking about getting into politics, pushing for nationwide change. Mind you, kid was only 21 years of age at the time fell out of his depth at first, but we talked through it, and I was all for it as long as it was what he really wanted. Uh. Eventually, he gave up on that too. Again, he had his reasons, and couldn't blame him exactly. And that's when his dream stopped. Roundabouts here. Look, like I said, he's a smart kid. It makes sense his reasoning, but you can reason yourself out of any idea, good or bad. Well, to be frank, there are countless reasons to stop trying these days. Lair and state gives us more and more every day. You didn't hear that from me, though. Hmm. hmm. How did you feel about those different ambitions? Did you agree with his thinking when he changed his mind? Good question. Wouldn't say I agree as much as I knew where Vulcan was coming from. Look, it's his life. It won't be of any help to the man if I try to decide things for him. That's common knowledge. I told him either pursue the noble, so long as he applied himself. I told him to do what made him happy. He told me he couldn't think that way. Hmm. It seemed to plague him, you know? These problems he was trying to contribute to. He felt the pressure to contribute as much as he possibly could. Although, he had to solve these issues, or there wasn't any point. Forces knows Safi and I never put those kind of expectations on him. Frankly, we never had to place any expectations on the kid. He defied them himself growing up. There was simply no need. <sighs> but somehow these expectations he's placed on himself have become overwhelming for him. Mm-hmm. The spirit of the issue is that the system's damn well isn't easy to approach for a kid like Vulcan. Um. Although, that kind of thing is clearly in my own work too. Only a select few tracers like Chen and I really put their spirit into it. Most really don't care. When it comes down to it, you'd think it'd be a profession that attract noble-minded types, but too many victims are neglected. He really is Lao Senior. This guy, interesting. That's why Ching and I are busting our butts running around the flaring country. Not a day that goes by we don't lose air over these cases we handle. Or maybe that's just me. Ching got too much air, if anything. Mm. <laughs> he does, doesn't he? 
I've always wanted to just trim it myself. Yeah. <laughs> you should, kid. Don't know if he's even got time to go to the barber. Really? I think back to all the time he spent with me, casually sitting and talking. All that time? Did he make sacrifices for it? I feel a pang of guilt. You're getting distracted again, Twyla. Hmm. So what's Vulcan doing these days then, Ona? Studying? He was studying science at Nova Uni for a couple years. Suddenly, he said he was taking a gap year, needed to figure things out. Sounded like it was a good idea to me, since his ambitions had changed several times. And then? Hmm. Well, it's been almost two years now. Oh. Mm-hmm. I tried to get him to do something, find a job, learn something, whatever. He was receptive at first, but that didn't last long. These days, whenever I try to push him to do anything other than just sit at home, he's always got some kind of retort. Sometimes I think he's just full of himself. Like he's still in that smart kid mentality he's used to. Sometimes, though, I really do think he's smarter than I understand. Hmm. What does he do at home? Uh, Gotta be honest. Seems like he just tries to run away from it all, escape into the little world inside the screens or the books. That's, that's really the only time I see him happy, you know? When he's distracting himself with something. Uh, I see. No matter how smart he is, that can't be healthy. No, escapism. You should only do as portion. You need to be able to be with your own thought. Yeah. Right. Kid can't just give up. You gotta do something. It's still better than nothing, even if it comes with its struggles. Even if there's an endless list of reasons to give up. Hmm. All worlds burning around you. Even then, you still gotta try, eh? Even for the sake of you and your family. Yeah. I don't know if I should feel bad or irritated at Vulcan. From what Ona's told me, he doesn't sound at all that different from me, really. I was there a couple weeks ago. I had given up. If we're to help him out of his slump of this, we have to give him the benefit of the doubt. I wasn't exactly embracing Lau's help at first, but right now, I wouldn't want for Lau to have given up on me back then. The realization has me feeling closer to Vulcan. Let's try to understand him better and do this enchantment right. Hmm. hmm. Ona, what would you say you want most for Vulcan? Huh. You know. You said you were able to turn your life around. How would you like Vulcan to do that for himself? That's the thing, Twyla. <sighs> Safi and I, we don't fuss about what he wants to be within reason. We just want the kid to be happy. To be able to make a living for himself. You don't mind if his dreams aren't lofty? Nope. Not at all. Those dreams of his, I said they were mine too, only because Vulcan wanted them. I see. I was wondering when you were talking about Lau earlier. <sighs> Would you say you'd like Vulcan to be more on the path that Lau's on? You know, since they both want to do good for people so much. Hmm. Cheng's a good example, you're right. The payoff situation in Zenoa hasn't got a single spirit blooming. It's looking as hopeless as chasing stars. But young Chen is still going at it. I don't understand his approach, barely even approve of it. But he's pushing himself. Trying things no one else is. Flaring stoicism, even. And he's somehow managed to convince me to let it slide. <laughs> and now I'm thinking I should let your enchanting slide, too. Y you gotta respect the kid. Huh? You... I thought you were here as a customer. I am, don't fret. But I also came to scope out the practice. Just didn't want to stress your spirit out, Twyla. Hmm? Huh? I... so... Relax. You're in the clear. Strictly speaking, if it's Circle certi Certified, it's not really the PRS's problem anymore. But look, I gotta make sure, you know? I'm Chen's super... I'm Chen's supervisor. 
And hey, if it's off the books, this case of yours. So far, I can see you've got an understanding of what you're doing. I mentioned disappointment, and you didn't jump to enchanting it. You've been making sure it's the appropriate emotion to enchant. Yeah. Shows you know what you're dealing with here. Mm-hmm. I always make sure to understand the situation first, but especially for a negative emotion like disappointment. Mm -hmm. But that... This is real, right? Please don't tell me this was all an experiment. <laughs> Relax, it's real. Yes, I do want you to enchant this bracelet with disappointment. Anyway, I'm turning a blind eye to any payoffs or scare. And you kids better appreciate it too. You've no idea the amount of rules I'm breaking letting Chen run amok like this. Really? I'm sorry, Ona. I'll do my best to keep things under control. But you were right, you know. Huh? Cheng may be a genius or a complete dolt, but he deserves respect regardless. Hmm. He's living the struggle through it all. He's fighting, you know. I do wish Vulcan would do the same, and I know he can. He can fight, and he can win. He's just not in the right mindset of the moment. Win or lose, you gotta fight. But Vulcan's not even entering the ring, you get me? He's convinced he's bound to lose. And in doing so, he's more worse for wear than any winner or loser. I understand what Ona's saying, and I agree. I agree, right? I feel troubled by something. I think, or am I just overthinking it? I feel to press on either way, but where to from here? What's the difference between Lau and Vulcan's situation? Lau is happy being a tracer and stuck to it. But I think of Benovi, Vulcan's being true to himself, no? By constantly reassessing his dreams. Hmm, I think I have to assume so. Maybe I should think differently on this. What about the people around them? Lau has you, and she seems to be really caring and supportive. I wonder, Ona, can I ask? Does he have friends to support? Friends or family? How do you and the rest of the family support Vulcan? From what you've told me, it seems you've tried to talk to him about it, no? Hmm, of course I have. Makes no sense to spend my day going around helping outburst victims, only to go home and ignore my son, eh? Thing is, Saf and I try to give him all the support we can. Kid doesn't have any siblings. Frankly, it's a shame for us here. I'm sure a sibling around his age would help him get through. Anyhow, he tells Saf all sorts of things, even nowadays. Things he, he's learnt and read up on in the news. Kid's a bit more guarded around me, but he opens up a little when I get him talking. But either of you haven't been able to get through to him. That's the short of it, yes. At some point, the conversation ends up becoming incredibly intellectual, and to be frank, <sighs> neither safe. Oh, I wonder if we could get the guy who talked about stoicism a lot. Maybe they could become friends, because they're both very intellectual. And they like talking about a lot of, you know, that kind of stuff. I wonder, I wonder. Neither Saf or I are able to really test him at that level. Mm -hmm. I see, so he feels misunderstood, distanced, perhaps Twyla. He's able to walk me through some of his thoughts when I'm particularly persistent. But <sighs> it's hard, Twyla. This parenting stuff takes the spirit out of you. It's your own damn kid, and they're right in front of you. Yet somehow, they're so flare and far away. I'm sorry, Ona. I can see you're really trying, though. Mm. I know Vulcan must appreciate it. I know I would. <laughs> Thanks, kid. So, where does this lead us, Twyla? You gonna ask me the big question yet? How did you know? <laughs> I'm usually on your side of the fence. With these kind of conversations, kid. I've been over two decades. Of course I know. Well, Ona, where does disappointment come into all of this? Why disappointment? Right, 
that's the thing. One of the biggest difficulties of all of this is that Vulcan's not trying anymore, like I told you. But he's confident with that stance. He's grown complacent. He believes that he's in the right here by giving up on life, by not even trying. Hmm? Really? Mm hmm. Hard for me to believe it myself, Twyla. But it's become clear. He thinks it's perfectly fine for him to have just dropped all of his dreams. That can't be right. How can he believe that? He must feel at least a little disappointed in himself. Y yeah, that's the issue. Kid doesn't feel that way anymore. I'm sure he's got some kind of plan to get it off his butt and start doing something someday. But effectively, he's stopped real a trying. Stop trying to do things his way to make the change in the world he's always wanted. And like I said, I reckon it's because of all the, the world's done to push him towards that conclusion. To convince him that it's not worth helping. <sighs> I know my kids have got a stubborn resilience to him, but it's finally got to him. He's been convinced to give up. So, without disappointment, he's hung up his gloves and moved on. Moved on? Mm-hmm. Look, Twyla. I'm sure by all ordinary measures, the kid'll be fine. He may even get back into studying science, become an environmental scientist like he initially wanted. He's got to get by somehow after all. But that's not the point of all of this. Well... If he just gives up what he wants, accepts defeat and half-heartedly finds whatever job is easy enough for him. I just know Vulcan won't really be happy. Hmm. The unexamined life, huh? You bet. Vulcan will be alive and well without all of this, I'm sure, financially at least. The kid will climb the ladder without trying, but he's never wondered any of that. So you think he's giving up on the only thing he really wanted? Yep. That's why I want that disappointment back. I want him to realize how cowardly and evasive this e excuse of, of there's no point is. Mm. I've tried and tried to talk to him out of that excuse. But I guess I gotta learn some things for you. Yourself. And like I said, Twyla. At some point of these conversations become too much for me and, and Safi, no matter how much we try. With a kid like Vulcan especially coming to this kind of realisation himself, he's more powerful than anyone else can teach him. Regardless, I can't just leave the kid like this. This state of complacency is a dangerous thing. Last thing I want is Vulcan growing even more cynical and pessimistic and bitter. I'm sure Ching's told you about complacency. You get into that kind of mindset. Yeah, it's hard to undo all of, all of those bad behaviors of thinking you get into. Exactly right, Twyla. Well said. You see why I'm doing all of this now, no? This is the middle ground between the two. I need to give him space to figure things out, but I also want to help him out a little. Hmm, that's good of you, Ona. Have you been doing anything else to try to help Vulcan outside of those chats? Not a whole lot. Got him some books, been trying to take him out more, n n but nothing special. That's plenty. Hmm. Hmm. Thanks, kid. So, what you thinking? I don't see anything wrong with what Ona's saying. Really, it makes too much sense. Then why... I run through the situation over and over again. Vulcan needs a little disappointment in himself to make him realize what he's missing out on. To once again aspire towards his dreams. That's a good thing, right? It's like getting a bad mark in a test, feeling disappointed and trying hard for the next one. I'm just overthinking it all. I must be. That's perfectly fine. But there's no harm in making sure. Besides, Una's a tracer. I can use his knowledge. One last thing before I move on, Ona. Why can't it be a different? Why not another emotion instead of disappointment? I'm sure there are some positive emotions that could work here, like hope. <laughs> I feel like hope or something similar could work. You know, hope that, oh my, like if I do this 
thing, and uh, maybe I will make a difference, you know? Hmm. Right. There's plenty that could work, but I think disappointment's our best bet. That's the short of it, Twyla. I understand your desire to shy away from enchanting negative emotions if it's unnecessary. But look, they're as important as positive ones, even if they come in a greater risk of causing chaos. Hmm? Hmm. What do you mean exactly? Well, there's a reason we feel disappointment. Just like there's a reason we, we feel overwhelmed. It can be too much, like the ladder is right now for Volk. But evolutionarily speaking, disappointment served us well enough to stick around. At least in theory that's the case. Of course, there's plenty wrong with us, humans that, that evolution turned a blind eye to. Anyhow, this kind of thing is where disappointment shines best, Twyla. You lose track of what you really want in life. Hmm. That feeling of disappointment comes in to steer you back on track. So why hasn't that happened for Vulcan? Hard to say, kid. I reckon that this negativity has overwhelmed him to an extreme level. Way more than he can even comprehend. A kid that's grown up bright-eyed and hopeful like him can't be easy becoming an adult being hit by a wave after wave of disillusionment for years on end. My guess is this has numbered any sense of disappointment left in Vulcan. He's completely convinced now. Giving up is for the best. Uh, uh there's a lot of disappointment going on here. Uh -huh. A bit confusing, eh? Hmm. Disappointment in societies causing Vulcan to lose all of his sense of disappointment in himself. But that really is the short of it, kid. Hmm, that's all, no? I think I should be good to enchant his piece now. I must just be feeling extra cautious after Tristam and Contenna. That flaring payoff demon. Alright, you've convinced me. I think enchanting disappointment here is a great idea. Mm. You mentioned you had a strong memory of feeling disappointed earlier. That's right, Twyla. Bit of a long story, though. No problem. Tell me about it. Right. So I gotta take you back 20 odd years for this one, back when I was still boxing. I was in my mid-twenties, in the prime of my career, winning belts left, right and centre. Wait, you were a boxer? <laughs> yeah. You didn't know that, kid. Haven't heard of the great Sopal Onar Siren? Um, I'm afraid not. That's alright. It was before you or Vulcan were around. Anyhow. Things were going well. I'd recently gotten married too. And then Safi's mother passed one summer. Oh. And she didn't take a will. I tried to be there for her. But I was busier than ever. I didn't spend as much time with her as I needed to. Though it may be good to give her some space. The two of them were really close. But things escalated. Safi fell into a depression and wasn't able to keep her payos in check. Lightning would strike sporadically throughout the day, even in the middle of one of the most flaring hot and dry summers in a long time. I remember, I was on my way back from winning a belt in Yubi when it started. Ah, Bushfires. She was suffering from a breakdown, and it brought the heat and lightning to the extreme levels. We lived on the outskirts back then. Safi likes being among nature more than anything, and there was plenty of bushland right next door. It was a terrible tragedy. Felt like the forces damn well orchestrated it. When I arrived at home, I saw her hunched over, head in her hands. It felt more powerless than ever. I just won a belt, but I realized I was incredibly weak, pathetic, useless. It wasn't long before they traced it back to us. Saf was distraught to learn it was her doing, and the fact that she was destroying the landscape she so dearly loved. It was a terrible time. I'm sure you understand. Yeah, Taz, that sounds awful. The traces were late. They should have been on the case when the dry storm started. They should have known that alone was more than enough danger to cause alarm. 
Even the media took notice of the dry storms and by the time the bushfires started, the reporters outnumbered the traces tenfold. And this was before they realised it was Ona Siren's wife that was the source. Clear and press had a field day when that was made public. Idiots at the PRS couldn't manage to protect our identities. No. Hmm. Forces know I felt terrible for South. Because of me, the press and the public were criticising us. People would be knocking on our doors, spewing vile crap. Of course, not everyone was like that. Some had nice things to say. But once a story gets big enough, you attract that small percentage of the lot who are just completely deranged. <sighs> Even some friends showed their true colours to us back then. Needless to say, we're not in touch anymore. Anyhow, all the attention, good or bad, you can imagine how it was for Saf. <sighs> yeah. At the time, I was still boxing, though it'd be best if I kept on as usual, avoid attracting any more attention. Thought that hopefully the traces could bring the right folk onto the job and help her out. Of course, I was flaring wrong. And every time I saw her, it just filled me with shame. I did my best to try to help her out. And while some of the psychologists definitely helped control the situation, she told me it was my presence that helped most of all. Oh. Well, you bet I put things on pause after hearing that. Understandable. Good husband right there. <laughs> First though, I had my last match to deal with. Told my agent, after this one I'm on hiatus. For how long, I got no clue. Could be days, could be years, whatever it took. That last match was a breeze. I was mad at the fella for being so weak. I should have been home with Safi instead of wasting my time with this runt. Anyhow, of course they interviewed me after that game. Oh wow, he looks so much younger. <laughs> oh my gosh. Couldn't blame the young bloke for the intrusive question. I could tell he was trying to ask it as kindly as possible. That they forced it onto him. He asked for a few words on the situation with my wife. Don't think for a second that my wife isn't trying her hardest, I said. Getting those flaring words out was harder than the match itself, but I kept going. You lot who are harassing her, you've got no idea what she's going through, and look. I don't care what anyone says, she's a stronger fighter than I'll ever be. Forces. I dedicated all my time to helping Saf from then on. It was tough, but we managed to control the outbursts over the next several weeks. The bushland was burnt to a crisp, but at the very least, no one was hurt. She was still suffering, though, every day. So I stayed with her. No. Felt terrible. I could only do so much to help her through it all. When it came down to it, again, I just didn't know how. One night, I reflected on things, on just how disappointed I felt about it all. Here we go. Focus. Staff was struggling. The outburst had stopped for now. But she wasn't all that far from risking payoffs. If Flair and her, seeing her like this, ten times worse than any beating I'd ever gotten in the ring. I could have done more for her. I could have been there earlier. I couldn't shake the feeling of powerlessness from seeing her break down before me while I was out fighting. What was I even fighting for? I had my glory, my fame. I'd honoured my skills and gained the, the mastery I always yearned for. In the ring, I was a fighter beyond my wildest imaginations, a champion. But out of it, nothing that happened in the ring mattered after seeing Safi like that. When it came to the real fight, I was nothing, less than a rookie. I was just back to being some kid. I couldn't be nothing for Safi. I wouldn't be. I held that disappointment in myself. I let it scar my spirit. I vowed from then on to never stop fighting the real fight. Disappointment would be what, like, anger and sadness, maybe? Like this top left one? 
No. There we go. There's disappointment. To transfer this payosin. Okay. It's like bluey purple okay so they are they it looks segmented but it's not segmented way less work Whew. i feel owner's disappointment surge through my spirit and i belt the energy out into the bracelet it's done owner i hope this bracelet can be vulcan's gloves i hope so too twala can't thank you enough kid for helping me and my son out and listening to an old man's stories mm. no problem owner but what happened after that is that when you became a tracer sure is i hung up the gloves that night and enrolled in the tracer academy didn't come with any shortage of ridicule that decision but i didn't flare and care i wanted to learn how to take care of safi better and i wanted to fight with a purpose for anyone that was struggling like safi was i wanted to be the tracer that actually managed to help i still feel that disappointment you know so don't worry, Twyla. Vulcan's in good hands. Ah, that's radiant, Ona. I hope I managed to convince you that my enchanting is worth the risk, too. <laughs> Stars know you did, kid. You and Ching make a flaring good team. You do keep fighting for me, too, eh? Mm -hmm. Of course. All right. Thanks again, Twyla. Take care. See ya, Ona. What a surprisingly wholesome turn of events. With that memory, I can definitely see how disappointment can help Vulcan out. I think back to the similarity between our situations. Although, if I were to receive an enchantment back then, when I was bedridden, would I have benefited from disappointment? I think so, right? In fact, isn't that what's brought me this far? feeling disappointed in having caused an outburst and being pushed to sort out my life. But am I better now? Have I moved beyond that overwhelmed me back then? Or am I still struggling 